The audio bending tools in Studio One allow us to stretch and squash audio to fit our timing needs. It largely does this through the use of bend markers that we place at the beginning and ends of sections that we want to manipulate. But first we need to be able to see the bend markers. So I'm going to right click on this bass guitar part here and then just make sure that the bend marker checkbox is selected there and then I'm going to press escape on my keyboard to get rid of this dialog box. The next thing I'm going to do is press the number 7 on my keyboard and that just selects the bend tool that we can see in the toolbar up here. Now I'm going to place some markers at the beginning of some of these bass guitar notes. So for example one here, one here, one here and I think there's one in there as well. Now if you place one accidentally and you want to get rid of it, then you can just double click on it and that will get rid of it like so. Now once I've got my markers in there, then I can grab one of these or just hover over it till the mouse changes, grab it and then just drag it, okay? And you can see that the audio is now being stretched between the markers either side of this one. Now if it's stretched, it's red and if it's squashed, it is green, okay? So that's how we can easily just change the timing of these notes. We haven't split the audio at all. We're actually just stretching it in between those markers. Now, this would be fine for some small jobs that you have to do in your project if you just want to manipulate one tiny section. But often you want to do much bigger jobs than that. You want to, for example, take this bass guitar part and then actually kind of quantize it with the rest of the material or to the grid. It's very easy to do and that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. I want you to think of this video as a practical guide to audio bending in Studio One. It's by no means a definitive guide or a kind of an encyclopedia of all of the features but just highlights the way that I would use it on a regular basis. First of all, with a single instrument like the bass guitar we looked at in the intro, and then with an instrument which is mic'd up with multiple microphones, more specifically with live drums. Let's get started by taking a look at that bass guitar. When we play this bass guitar alongside the drums, it reveals some pretty sloppy timing on the bass guitar's part. Have a quick listen. <laughs> It gets better towards the end, but especially at the beginning there, it's sloppy. And that could be happening across the course of a whole song. And you wouldn't want to have to go in and manually correct that. But there is a great way to do it automatically. Now, before we dive into this, I just want to make sure that you can see the tools that you need. So go up to the top to a blank area here, right click, and then click on Customize. And in this dialog box, just make sure that Advanced Tools is checked. So I'll do that now and then close that off. Now, rather than manually add our bend markers, we're going to have Studio One automatically detect transients and place bend markers there. So I'm going to go up to the top here and just click on Audio Bend. That reveals all of these options here, okay? Now, before I have it analyze the bass guitar part, I actually just want to select the time stretch mode here, okay? There's a few different ones, and in this case, it has the correct one I think for this purpose just so solo this is a solo instrument so that's going to work fine and the next thing I'm going to do is then just click on analyze and you'll see right away that it's added in those bend markers there and it seems to have done a really really good job of detecting every single note of the bass guitar let's just have a quick listen and see if those bend markers are coinciding with a note <laughs> I think that's actually perfect. Now, just in case it didn't pick up some or perhaps it picked up too many, then you would want to adjust the threshold control here, okay? And you'll be able to see as I reduce it here, it gets rid of some of those markers. And as I increase it all the way up to the top, it's got a, a few little extra ones like we can see here. They're probably not all that useful, okay? So it happens that at 80%, which is its default value, it was picking up those notes perfectly for my bass guitar. Now, the next thing I want to do is actually quantize this audio, okay? We're going to do this just like we would with MIDI or something like that. We're going to correct the timing 
of individual notes here. It's going to do this according to your quantize settings. Mine's on 1 16th at the moment. So you need to make sure that is set. And just like with your regular quantize tools, you can do things like, you know, set the strength of it. So it's not too precise, but I'm going to have it on 100%. So it really locks in with those drums. And all I need to do is actually click on apply. And you can see it's manipulated the audio there. It's squashed some parts, stretched some parts. And if we have a listen now, I reckon that should be pretty good. So much better than it was before. Now we could go ahead and still add in other markers manually if we want to, if we feel that some parts need special attention. And we're going to be looking at that later. But before we get into that, I want to talk about another scenario because with this one, we already had the drums in time and we were just making the bass guitar in time with those drums. But what about when you've got multiple things, perhaps things that have been recorded with multiple mics and you want to make sure those tracks all get bent and stretched all in unison with each other. This is especially important when you're dealing with drums and that's what we're going to do next. So I've got some real drums here, of course, recorded with multiple microphones and I've got the click track turned up fairly loud here so that you can listen to them against that and get a sense of the timing. And that's not bad, that just sounds human, and I probably wouldn't bother to correct that normally. But there are some areas of the performance where things just get a little bit off of the grid here. For example, just leading up to the bridge here, I'm just going to play this little section, and listen how the drummer's feel goes a little bit ahead of the beat here. And there's a few little bits through the performance like that, which I'd like to tidy up. But rather than do that manually, I do want to use these kind of automated uh, features to do this. Now, the key to this is making sure that any changes you make to one of these tracks are reflected in all of these, all of the other tracks as well. If you don't do that, then the tracks are going to become out of time with each other and you're going to get phase issues, okay? And they may be very small, but they can really change the sound. You don't want to do that. So what we need to do is actually group these all together so that the change is reflected across the board. So I'm just going to select the first of the drums here, I hold shift on the keyboard and select the last one. Then I'm going to press control G on the keyboard to bring up this dialog to add a group and I'll call the group drums like so, and click on OK. So they're now all grouped. And so I can see my group easily. I'm just going to click on this little icon down here, the group icon, and then I can see my group here. OK. Now, what I could do is just go up and select one of these clips, and you'll see that all of them have been selected. Click on Analyze, and that's going to go ahead, and it's actually going to go through all of the different recordings of the drums and find the transients. So you'll see here when it finishes this, of course, on each track, the transients have been found in slightly different places. But we can go ahead and just uh, quantize that. I'll press Q on the keyboard this time to quantize. And that can be fairly effective. It can work quite well. But I have to tell you, it's not the way I like to do things, okay? I find all of these transients which are created a little bit complex to use, especially if I want to go want to go in later and do some manual adjustments. So I'll show you how I do it. I'll just undo that, okay, and I'll undo the transient detection. So we have the drums grouped at the moment, but just for a moment, I'm going to ungroup them. I'll, I'll keep the group, but I'll just switch it off, and I can do that over here just by clicking on this little dot here, okay? Now, you could pick any drum to do this. Um, let's go for something which is pretty consistent okay you want you probably wouldn't choose like a symbol or something because there wouldn't be enough transients detected i'm going to pick um one of these snare tracks here okay the reason i'm picking this is because it is consistent all the way through and there's enough bleed from other you know from other drums here that you know you get quite a lot of transients all the way through there okay so with that one selected and making sure that the group is not enabled at the moment i'll go ahead and do my analysis okay so it's found those transients here okay and in fact i can see you know that bit i pointed out earlier where it was a bit out of time it's picked up all the transients for that i'll just zoom in and i'm zooming in by pressing e 
on the keyboard here okay and you can see with that little build up there i'll play it it's picked up a transient for every single beat there okay so we haven't corrected the timing yet before we do that we just want to make sure we enable that group again okay so i'll switch the group back on like so and then i'm just going to press q on the keyboard for quantize and you'll see all of the other tracks actually shift around, not just this one where we've detected the transients. Yep, so you saw that happen. We'll play that. And we're nicely quantized. It's as simple as that, really. Of course, you can still go in if you wish. If it doesn't quite work out, you can still sort of go in there and you could say grab, uh, you can see just a couple of little beats here, for example. I could manually go in and add some uh, markers there. I'll turn the snap off, go in here. Yeah, add a marker there. And you'll see that when I move this around, look at the other tracks above and below it. They're also moving in synchronization. Just the key being to group them all together, okay? And that's it. I find I get great results in this way. Of course, audio bending is just one of the ways we can manipulate audio in Studio One. If you wanna get up to date with all of the editing tools, take a look at this video right here.